Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. Welcome to our latest breakdown, this one for Terra no Fuji and Shodai. This may seem like an odd choice, considering it's 11-5 Teru all time, he's won 7 of the last 8, and in terms of general quality, it's basically the champ in the punching bag. However, this breakdown gives us a chance to not only review the 3 fights of theirs we have on tape, but also Nishikigi's win over Teru on day 2, and see if we can gain any insight into what might lead to another upset. Let's get into it. This is the most straightforward of the fights we have to watch. Shodai comes in with his hands low, but as we can see on the other side, that hasn't prevented Teru from being able to reach for the belt with his left hand. Shodai jostles him back a bit, but fails to get his hips back before Teru can secure the left hand grip. Shodai often suffers from happy feet, wanting to move rather than hang in, get his weight down, and try using his pretty absurd strength from a static position, so Teru uses his full control to ride Shodai's retreat to a win. Showed I failed to defend against the initial grab, couldn't stay still, and that was the ball game. This time Teru gets his right arm inside of Shodai's left rather than clamping it, looking for the belt on both sides. It's a perfectly reasonable strategy. He knows if he gets the belt, it'll be very difficult for Shodai to defend himself, and looking for it on both sides while only really needing one hand to land means Shodai needs to defend himself successfully on both sides against an opponent with a 4 inch height advantage and the corresponding extra reach. Here you can see Teru leaning awfully far forward. Shodai's right hand is reaching for the underhand grab, and he's pulling his left back to punch it down and inside, so he's not actively defending against Teru's arms at this moment. But when he gets that left hand down, pulls the right arm out, and shifts his hips back, he's able to just prevent either of Teru's hands from landing on the belt. Now it's obvious how overextended Teru is, so, since he's free of Teru's control, Shodai just has to get out of the way. On the one hand, some people call this upset because Teru, despite being 11-2 at this point in the Basho, was clearly starting to struggle with his knees, and they felt Shodai was good enough to take advantage. On the other hand, whether Teru made a mistake in using a strategy that his knees couldn't keep up with, or his knees were in such a state that he had to take this kind of risk, he basically did this to himself. Shodai did just enough to make him pay for the overextension, but Teru's feet just could not keep up with the plan. This past May, with surgery over and knees in much better condition, Teru goes for that double grip again, but with considerably better balance. This time Shodai makes a point of defending the attack, and gets Teru's arms way up and away from the belt. Teru's center of gravity is way way up here, and Shodai uses that to start pushing. Teru's feet aren't that nimble, so he's just able to keep his stance and his balance. It looks like Shodai's in a great position. But that's when the champ does champ things. Check this out. Teru stops shuffling and does a purposeful hop step. He knows exactly where he is in the ring and lands just short of the rope, knowing he'll slide back into it. Shodai has good momentum but little actual control of Teru's trajectory here, so Teru knows he only has to deal with the force of the push. Just before he hits the rope, his right arm is already pushing up on Shodai's left armpit as he drops down, regaining the leverage advantage. His intention is to use the rope as a pivot point, but in order to do that, he has to start throwing Shodai just before he makes contact. To put it another way, Shodai has to be in motion in the direction Teru wants him to go because he won't be able to use that pivot from a dead stop or if his momentum is going a different way. It takes until about here for Teru's right leg to actually make contact with Shodai's left and hit the trip that clinches the throw. That's how Teru was able to make it look like he just shucks Shodai off with one arm. His timing with every facet of the move was as perfect as it could have been. This is the Abima version, which I got from Sumo Jason's channel. I hope he doesn't mind. Anyway, how did Nishikigi pull off his win? Nishikigi keeps his arms in tight and his elbows up on the Tachiai. Teru goes over the top on the left side and pinches Nishikigi's other arm with his right. He could very easily grab the belt, but chooses not to. Nishikigi largely only has one method of fighting, going straight at his opponent's face. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. So, somewhat predictably, he jams his hands inside, and Teru instantly clamps down on him. I can't be certain, but given how proficient Teru is on the belt, and that he ignored a chance to grab it here, I'm guessing that was a purposeful decision. He must know Nishikigi doesn't do a lot of maneuvering, so looking for a double clamp with a plan to back him out of the ring like he's done to countless others makes perfect sense, and he gets those clamps. Now he has overhooks versus Nishikigi's underhooks. But Nishikigi has a plan. 
at least I figured this was a plan, because if he pulled this off at the drop of a hat, I have not given him enough credit. See how they're in opposite stances, and it's slightly open to Nishikigi's right? Teru wants them square up, so he steps forward with his left foot. Most guys, getting their arm squeezed, automatically end up square because the body doesn't want to move in a way that adds torque to the clamp. But Nishikigi takes that exact moment to swing his right foot back, opening that side up even further, and heave with all his might. This is the fight. If it works, he wins, and if it doesn't, he loses. He doesn't even get his leg in front of Teru's for a trip to help with the throw. Nishikigi's strength is the one thing he always has, even when he's struggling, and here he puts it to use at just the right time to take down the Yokozuna. Look at how Teru rolls, too. This wasn't even a case of Teru getting into a position he can't quite escape from. This was a straight-up ambush. So, this gives us two questions. First, can Shodai replicate Nishikigi's feet? Probably not. He has the strength to pull that kind of throw off, but Teru knows the whole sumo world saw that, so he's not going to easily end up in a position where someone else can replicate the strategy. Second then, is does he have a way to win focused on his own style? And that, perhaps surprisingly, is maybe yeah. Teru doesn't seem like his knees are a major problem right now, so Shodai's not going to luck into the overextension that got him his victory last July. But in the last Basho, he did a very good job defending against Teru's hands, then turning that defense into a powerful drive. It's not something that would beat everyone except Teru. Other guys, like Hoshoryu or Wakadu, are both good enough at the rope that they may have pulled off similar victories. However, if he can find a similar position and practice ways to stay in control so he can finish the job, I'd give him a 20, maybe 25% chance of winning. That may not sound like much, but be honest. If you knew Nishikigi had a specific plan for fighting Teru, would you have given him even that much of a chance? Alright, that's it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.